Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Well, what time are you calling me today, David? What about? About my coming to New York. What have we been talking about for the last 24 hours? Well, I was hoping we'd start talking about something else. We won't. Hey, slip in that piece of toast, will you? Oh, listen, this is a dry, crusty I one. I'll mind. eat it. No, I'll no. make you a fresh now, one. Now, don't be so noble. I like dry, crusty ones. Don't one. you be so noble. You like them nice and hot and fresh. So I'll make you a nice, fresh, hot one. I like dry, crusty ones. You're just saying that to be self-sacrificing. You can wait two minutes. won't hurt you. Any complaints? I like dry, crusty ones. I say you don't. Listen, what time you call me, David? As soon as I know whether you're coming or I'm going. Give me a little notice, will you please? How much notice is a little notice? Well, it'd be wonderful if when you got to the office you'd find out right away whether you're staying in tonight or not. No, I probably then won't. Then you could call me and I'll have all day to get ready in. Stumps me what you're going to need all day to get ready in for. Details, David. Oh. Details. I have a million of them. You went over two million of them with Bertha last night. Of course, it's none of my business. None? If you want to make life complicated for yourself, go ahead, go ahead. Make out all sorts of little lists. You just go right ahead. Thank you. You're very sweet today. Nothing at all. Your toast, sir? Now, you take that piece. I'll take the dry, crusty one. After I went to all the trouble of making this one for you? You insisted. I wasn't going to deny you the pleasure of making it, but kindly, kindly pass me the dry, crusty one. You're dry and crusty yourself. I suppose that's why you like your toast that way. Precise. Mm. Now, tell me, Mrs. Norton, what are some of the millions of details that you have to attend to? I'm not going to discuss it with you. You take too much pleasure in making fun of it. My details are my details. <laughs> It is the good executive who knows how to detail details to others. Well, running a house and running an architectural firm is running two different things, mm-hmm. my good man. I suppose running a house is much more complicated. Much? Yeah, that, that's because women run houses. Go on, go on. If the men ran houses, it'd be simple and efficient, mm-hmm. methodical and speedy. Go on, I'm listening. Yeah, the first secret is not to feel that you have to do everything for yourself. Hmm? After all, if you can afford to have somebody in the house to help you, you, you have to have respect for that. Two persons doing the same job is a, is a waste of one person. That's so obvious. right, darling. Yeah, you women. You women, you have to have your finger in every pie. Every How about one. another piece of no, toast, speaking no, of pie? No, 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 no more toast. You women have to feel that if it weren't for you, things would just fall apart, disintegrate. You're deluded. Yes, yes, you are. You're deluded. 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 It's a nice-sounding word. I'm glad you like it. Shame it doesn't mean something pleasant, isn't it? Although I don't think it's so terrible to be deluded, do you? Guess not. The best people are. Mm. Well, that's enough breakfast. For one breakfast. Listen, where are you rushing off to? You have plenty of time before your train. I thought I'd go up to the barn and say good morning to Fred. Good, I'll come with you. I haven't seen the heifer in a couple of days. Well, put on something warm. It's kind of bleak out. It'll feel awful funny to have to get dressed up in New York every morning, won't it? Don't you dress up up here? Well, can't call slacks and shoes very dressy. David, while you're in the closet, take me out. Take me out my overcoat, will you? Take you out your overcoat. I have it out already. Thank you. No, I certainly don't think you can call slacks and shoes dressy. In New York, I'll have to get into a dress and stockings and gloves. I'm not sure I'm going to like it either. Here, I'll hold your coat for you. Thank you. You like it all right. Mm, lining's torn. Mm. And New York will be nice for a change. You know, it's very funny. Till I was offered the change, I thought I needed a change. Now, I'm not so sure I need it anymore. Well, you're fickle. Now, you all ready? I am. Ooh, it's cold. It's oh, cold. Boy. Oh, that poor old rooster out in the cold. He's 
the most pathetic bird. Yeah, what makes you think he's so pathetic? Well, if he was smarter, he'd know better than to stay here all winter. <laughs> David, he's going to feel as if he's the last friend he's got has left him when we go to New York. Poor old bird. Another two months and it'll be spring and warm again. April's certainly a long time in coming. Like having a baby. Are you going to call Mama or shall I? Now, what made you think of Mama at that moment? Oh, the mind wanders. David, you don't think I'm a Mama baby anymore, do you? You? Sure you are. I am. Mm -hmm. You're a Mama to our baby. I miss him, too. Hey, Fritz. Hey, Fritz. Honey, I guess he's around Fritz. back of the barn. Does he know he's going to be in full charge? Well, Fritz knows he always is. <laughs> I don't treat him the way you seem to think you have to treat Bertha. Telling her this, telling her this. Worrying about everything behind her back. Oh, no, you're very different. Mm -hmm. Love the way barn doors always creak. Just like a barn. Hey, Fritz. Fritz, are you in the barn? I'm just milking majesty. Oh, good. And you'll be sitting in one place for five minutes. Well, hello, majesty old girl. How are you? Hello yourself, you beautiful girl. Oh. How's she milking, Fritz? Hello. Uh, she's milking fine, uh, like usual. Good. Uh, only better. How many quarts is she giving us now? Uh, she's breaking her own record. Hey, Yesterday, 23, Mr. 23, Lord. wonderful. Ah. Say, this is a fine time for us to be going to New York, and Majesty's giving us 23 quarts. Well, we're not drinking it all ourselves, anyway. It's a crime not to be here. You know what'll happen, David? What? When we get back... She'll probably go dry. That's the way of cows. It is because cows are women. Oh. All right, girl. That is all. If I were a cow, I'd be so conceited. Well, you're conceited enough without being a cow. Thank you. Now, Fritz, I suppose you've gathered that Mrs. Norton and I are going to spend a few days in New York. Uh, Bertha told me. Uh, Mrs. Brown will be pleased to have you for a change. Everybody's so happy to get rid of us. <laughs> Bertha rubbed her hands and said, It's nice for you to go to New York. The baby gurgled when I told him. Dogs aren't the least bit depressed. And now, Fritz, I'm starting to feel positively unwanted. Mm, a change is nice. Do you want a change? I? Oh, no. Why is a change always nice, I wonder, for everybody else? Well, anyway, Fritz, we'll be in town for a few days, so the place will be all yours. I take care of everything for you. Uh, when you come back, it will be as if you had never left, uh, I hope. Not better. I'm not sure whether Mrs. Norton will join me in New York today or tomorrow, but in case I stay over tonight, well, there are just one or two things that I'd better check with you first. Uh, there is a pail, Mr. Norton. Uh, please sit no, down. No, 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 thanks. I'll only be a second. After all, you know the place as well as I do. And after all, David doesn't believe in having to give people instructions or having to meddle at all, for that matter. Do huh. you, David? Aren't we funny this morning? Very funny. Now, Fritz, we'll go right on selling our surplus milk to Mr. Tucker. He'll probably be needing it for several more weeks now. Uh, Mr. Tucker has come in very handy, or we would all have drowned in milk. Listen, I'll take some to New York. Homegrown milk, it certainly tastes good in New You'll York. You'll take it to New York over my dead body. I'm not going to have you traveling with bottles of things in your arms. I don't mind. Well, I do. Oh. There's old Ruby over there, too. Doesn't she look nervous? Hello, Ruby, you lonesome old pig. You think I've forgotten you? Hello, Ruby. Listen, David, if we're in New York when Ruby fouls, I'll never forgive you, that's all. You know, you're starting to make me feel as if you don't want to go to New York. I do, I do. But I don't want to miss anything on the farm. I will let you know in advance. I thought you didn't know so much in advance about pigs, Fritz. Uh, Ruby and I are very good friends. Oh. Say, Fritz, I, I think perhaps we ought to include more protein in Ruby's diet. What do you uh, think? I was thinking of that. It wouldn't hurt her. She could certainly use it. Uh, I've been planning to. Oh, say, I called the carpenter about building the new equipment shed in case he comes today or tomorrow while you'll be able to take care of it. I show him everything. I understand what you want, Mr. Norton. Good. And uh, now, in case you need the vet, here's the number. I wrote it down here for Dr. Beard in Eastbrook Center. A vet? I will not need a vet. Mm. I know my animals. Well, you never can tell what comes up here, do Why you? should anything come up? Nothing come up, comes up when we're here. Why should anything come up just because we're gone? Because things have a way of happening that way. Oh, I see. Anyway, here's Dr. Beard's number now. And in mm. case you can't get him, there's Dr. Lane in Bridgeport. Uh, Dr. Lane? I don't think I like him. Well, you've never met him. I hear stories from Mr. Warren. I do not like well, him. Well, all right, all right. 
And here's the number of Dr. Engram on the other side of Cream Hill. You better have the name of two vets. Well, you certainly are taking precautions. You think we're going to the North Pole instead of just an hour to New York. Will you hush up? No. Anything else, Mr. Norton? Well, in case Mr. Tucker wants to talk to us about dividing up the meadow line, well, you go right ahead and talk to him. I will wait for you. There is no hurry. Oh, 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 yes, one more thing. Uh, Ruby had a little trouble with her hind leg a while back. I looked at it yesterday and looked at me as if it was starting up again. So in case... I have this prescription filled out at the drugstore. In case. In case. Honestly, David, for a man who doesn't believe in telling other people things, you're in-casing an awful lot. Oh, hello, Ruby. Show me the... And Fritz, if the price of hay goes down, well, you buy it. No, 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 David. Fritz knows when to order hay and when not to order hay. Just the way Bertha knows when to order vegetables and when not to order vegetables. Or, uh, doesn't he? Shut up. All right, all right, all right. Now, let me see. I made out a list of some other things I wanted you to take care of, Fritz. All right. Don't tell me you made out a list, Mr. Norton. And why shouldn't I make out a list? Because lists are only made out by women who feel they have to run everything. Who said that? I can't imagine you're talking nonsense. I'm quoting you. Very funny. I thought uh, you Mr. Think Norton, so. I do not want you to worry about a thing. Oh, I'm not worrying about anything, Fritz. I, I just want to help you be prepared for any eventuality that might arise while I'm not here. That was a lovely sentence. Thank you. So important sounding, you know. Now, now you listen to me, Fritz. A few very important things. First, I want you to see that Majesty gets plenty of sleep and that Ruby gets plenty of wake. <laughs> Pay no attention to her, And Fred. don't let her out in the rain without her overshoes. Mm-hmm. And Fritz, please, now please don't let the heifer out if it's below freezing. So delicate, the heifer, you Mrs. know. Mrs. Norton thinks and, that uh, she's kidding me, Fritz. Oh, I no, think no. she is kidding you. No. Mrs. Norton thinks it's a very simple matter for a man to leave his farm for a few days. That he can just walk out without a backward glance. Mrs. Norton only thinks that if what you say applies to a woman, it should apply to a man, too. It is always very nice to worry about things that you don't have to worry about. Oh, I'm not worrying, but it's one thing to leave a house with nothing but a baby in it, and another thing to leave a barn with a cow and a heifer and a pig with a litter coming and a rooster in it. The rooster in the litter? My goodness. But it's all right now, David. I couldn't possibly have loved a man who'd think more of his son than his cow. So you just make all the fuss you want, darling. I understand. Oh, you do. Certainly I do. Oh, but that reminds me, David. There, there, there are about 50 more things I forgot to tell Bertha. In case the baby gets a cold, and in case the price of eggs goes down, and in case the radiator springs a leak. And in case I bop you one, you'd better run. <laughs> Parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Ask any party guest which he prefers, a big, elaborate party at which the hostess wears herself out with preparations, or a simple, easygoing evening with coke enough to go round and a light-hearted, untroubled lady of the house. You know what the answer will be. Just keep a good supply of ice-cold Coca-Cola on hand, and you'll be prepared to act the role of Miss Hospitality 1949. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are... Whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere.